Every year, the world produces a staggering 186 million tons of sugar, enough to fill over 7.4 million shipping containers. That's about 53 pounds of sugar for every person on Earth. But how does a humble plant transform into the crystalline sweetener we use every day? From harvesting sugarcane and sugar beets to crushing, filtering, and crystallizing, this is how factories process over 500,000 tons of sugar every day to satisfy our collective sweet tooth. Sugar is everywhere. In your morning coffee, baked into your favorite desserts, and hidden in countless processed foods. It's one of the most consumed commodities on the planet, and humans have been extracting it for over 2,500 years. Why? Because sugar delivers that irresistible sweetness our brains are hardwired to crave. But there's something even more fascinating about sugar production. It's a perfect blend of agricultural tradition and cutting-edge industrial engineering. The journey from plant to packaged product involves multiple chemical processes that transform raw plant matter into the pure white crystals we all recognize. Sugar production began around 500 BC in India, where locals discovered they could extract a sweet substance from sugarcane. For centuries, sugar was considered a luxury item, sometimes worth its weight in gold. It wasn't until the 1700s that sugar became more widely available as production expanded to the Caribbean and Americas. The Industrial Revolution changed everything for sugar production. In 1747, German scientist Andreas Margraff discovered that the sugar in beets was identical to that in sugarcane. This breakthrough eventually led to the establishment of sugar beet factories across Europe in the early 1800s, dramatically increasing sugar availability worldwide. Today, approximately 80% of the world's sugar comes from sugarcane, while the remaining 20% comes from sugar beets. The modern sugar industry emerged as technologies advanced, enabling mass production on an unprecedented scale. The development of vacuum pans in the 19th century revolutionized the crystallization process, allowing for higher yields and better quality. Today's sugar factories are marvels of efficiency, processing thousands of tons of plant material daily. From field to factory, the journey of sugar begins in vast agricultural fields where either sugarcane or sugar beets are cultivated. These two plants may look completely different, but they both store sucrose in their tissues that can be extracted through similar industrial processes. Sugarcane, a tall grass resembling bamboo, thrives in tropical and subtropical climates. It takes about 12 to 18 months to reach maturity, growing up to 15 feet tall. What makes sugarcane special is its ability to store incredible amounts of sugar. Up to 18% of its weight is sucrose. Brazil leads the world in sugarcane production, followed by India and China, collectively growing over 1.9 billion tons annually. In contrast, sugar beets look like large white carrots and are adapted to temperate climates. They reach maturity in just 4 to 5 months and contain 15-20% to 20 sucrose by weight. Russia, France, and the United States are the leading producers of sugar beets. These hardy vegetables revolutionize sugar production by allowing countries in cooler climates to produce sugar domestically instead of importing it from tropical regions. The harvesting methods for these crops differ significantly. Modern sugarcane harvesting is typically mechanized with massive harvesters cutting the cane stalks at the base and stripping away the leaves. These machines can harvest up to 100 tons of sugarcane per hour. Sugar beets are harvested using specialized equipment that pulls the entire plant from the ground, cuts off the tops, and collects the roots. Once harvested, time becomes critical. Sugarcane begins losing its sucrose content immediately after cutting, so it must reach the processing facility within 24 hours. Sugar beets are more stable and can be stored for weeks in large piles before processing, though they're usually covered to protect them from freezing and rain. When sugarcane arrives at the factory, it undergoes immediate processing to prevent sugar losses. The first step is washing and preparation. Massive water jets spray down the cane to remove dirt, rocks, and other debris. The clean cane is then fed into shredders, massive rotating blades that tear the tough stalks into fibrous pieces, 
breaking open the cells to make sugar extraction easier. Sugar beet processing begins similarly with a thorough washing. Giant rotating drums remove soil and debris from the beets. The clean beets are then sliced into thin strips called cossettes by automated slicing machines. These V-shaped strips maximize the surface area for sugar extraction. A single sugar beet factory might process over 10,000 tons of beets daily during peak season. The extraction methods differ between the two crops. For sugarcane, massive roller mills crush the shredded cane. These mills consist of multiple sets of counter-rotating rollers that squeeze out the sugar-rich juice like a giant mechanical press. Water is sprayed onto the cane between sets of rollers to help dissolve additional sugar in a process called imbibition. A typical mill can extract about 95 to 97 percent of the sugar from the cane. The leftover fibrous material, called bagasse, isn't wasted. It's burned in special boilers to generate steam and electricity, making many sugar factories energy self-sufficient. Some modern mills produce enough excess electricity to sell it back to the power grid. For sugar beets, extraction occurs through diffusion rather than pressing. The sliced cassettes are fed into a diffuser, a large vessel where hot water flows counter-current to the beet slices. This dissolves the sugar into a raw juice through a process similar to brewing tea, except on an industrial scale. A modern diffuser can process up to 17,000 tons of beet slices daily, extracting about 98% of the sugar. The leftover beet pulp, unlike bagasse, isn't burned but is typically dried and sold as livestock feed due to its nutritional value. This creates an additional revenue stream for beet sugar factories. The raw juice extracted from either plant contains more than just sugar. It's filled with impurities that must be removed. The juice appears as a murky, dark-colored liquid bearing little resemblance to the white crystals we associate with sugar. The purification process begins with adding lime calcium oxide to the juice. When mixed with the raw juice, the lime neutralizes acids and combines with impurities to form larger particles that can be separated out. Carbon dioxide is then bubbled through the mixture in a process called carbonation. This creates calcium carbonate particles that trap additional impurities as they form. Large industrial filters then remove these particles. Modern factories use massive pressure filters that can process thousands of gallons per hour. The filters consist of stacked plates covered with filter cloths that catch the solid particles while allowing the clarified juice to pass through. These filters must be cleaned regularly as they become clogged with the removed impurities. After filtration, the juice undergoes additional treatment with sulfur dioxide to remove colorants and achieve a lighter colored solution. This process, called sulfitation, prepares the juice for the next critical stage, evaporation. The purified juice, now a clearer golden liquid, contains only about 15% sugar, too diluted for crystallization. Massive evaporators concentrate this solution by removing excess water. These evaporators are arranged in a series called a multiple effect evaporation system, where steam from one effect heats the next, maximizing energy efficiency. Inside these towering vessels, the juice boils under vacuum conditions, which lowers the boiling point and prevents caramelization of the sugar. As water evaporates, the solution becomes increasingly concentrated until it reaches about 60 to 70 percent sugar content. This thick, honey like substance is called syrup. The syrup moves to vacuum pans, large vessels where controlled crystallization occurs. A sugar boiler, one of the most skilled positions in a sugar factory, oversees this critical process. Small sugar crystals called seed grain are added to the syrup to serve as nuclei for crystal growth. Under carefully controlled temperature and pressure conditions, sugar molecules in the solution gradually attach to these seed crystals, causing them to grow larger. This crystallization process can take several hours as the sugar boiler monitors crystal formation through viewing ports and sampling. The goal is to produce uniform crystals of the desired size. 
The resulting mixture of crystals and remaining syrup is called masacuate, a thick, porridge-like substance that contains fully formed sugar crystals suspended in molasses. The masacuate is fed into centrifuges, machines that spin at over 1,000 rotations per minute, generating forces more than 1,000 times that of gravity. This tremendous force separates the sugar crystals from the surrounding syrup. As the centrifuges spin, the liquid molasses passes through tiny perforations in the centrifuge basket while the crystals remain inside. These industrial centrifuges operate in cycles, spinning for a predetermined time before stopping to discharge the separated sugar. A single centrifuge can process several tons of masacuate per hour. The separated crystals are sprayed with a small amount of water to wash off any remaining syrup, resulting in white sugar crystals. The molasses separated during this process isn't waste. It contains significant amounts of sugar that can be recovered. The molasses is recycled through the crystallization process multiple times, with each cycle producing progressively darker molasses and less sugar. After the final crystallization, the remaining blackstrap molasses becomes a byproduct used in animal feed, alcohol production, and various food products. The separated sugar crystals emerge from the centrifuges with about 1 to 2% moisture content. They then pass through giant rotating drums called dryers, where hot air removes the remaining moisture. Cooling follows immediately to prevent the sugar from caramelizing or clumping. The finished crystals are then screened to sort them by size before packaging. Modern sugar factories can produce various types of sugar by adjusting the crystallization and refining processes. Brown sugar is essentially white sugar with some molasses added back in or less thoroughly washed during centrifuging. Powdered sugar is made by grinding granulated sugar into a fine powder and adding a small amount of cornstarch to prevent clumping. The final stage of sugar production involves packaging the finished product for distribution. Automated packaging lines fill bags ranging from individual packets to massive 2,000-pound super sacks for industrial customers. Quality control systems using optical sensors inspect the sugar for any foreign materials or off-color crystals. A single large sugar factory can produce over 500,000 tons of sugar annually, operating 24 hours a day during processing season. The global sugar trade is massive with about 50 million tons traded internationally each year. Brazil, Thailand, and India are the largest sugar exporters. From the ancient methods of pressing and boiling cane juice in open pans to today's highly automated factories that can process thousands of tons daily, sugar production has evolved dramatically. Yet the basic principles remain the same. Extract the sweet juice from the plant, purify it, and crystallize it into the familiar product we use every day. Thank you for tuning in. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution.